creatives! In this video, I want to show you my favourite left hand pattern, or the left hand pattern I can't live without. Now, at Creative Piano Academy, I'm always looking for simple ways to get you sat at that piano and just playing beautiful music. And having 88 keys staring back at you can be somewhat intimidating, which is why having things that you can just know and things you can call upon is very useful. And this is an example of something that I use to just get my juices flowing and um, just start having fun, start that creative process. And I think it sounds really nice. So I'll play something for you and then we'll break that left hand down and um, show you what to do. So check this out. So, you know, on and on we go. And um, I was just making that up. Um, but the principle, the idea behind that is that my right hand can be doing anything it wants. It's, as far as the melody goes, it's setting that foundation in the left hand that is important and that just, just gives us a foundation to build any melodies on. So what's happening here? Well, in essence, I'm just taking standard triads, okay, just standard chords in any key. Okay, I'm going to show you it in C. Just bear in mind that you can do this in any key that you like with any chord that you like. But if I played a standard C major chord down here, a C, an E, and a G, it can sound quite um, dissonant, can't it? Okay, if I just put those together, it sounds quite rough and rough around the edges. And that's because these notes down here, the further down the piano we go, if these notes are close together, it tends to, they tend to fight each other. And so to get around that, to still get that tonality across, that harmony of the, of the C major across, I'm gonna take that middle note, this E, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shove it up one octave. So the notes that we're interested in now would be the C, the G, and then instead of the E being here, it's now going to be the same note, but up here in this octave. Now check that out, okay? That sounds so much more, it sounds wider. It's, it's got more, um, more, what would be the word? It's, it's more space to it, right? It sounds really, really nice. Um, and then what you can do is you just move the this position around to any of the other chords that you like. So this would be the C major, C, E, and G. Then we can use a F major chord, okay? I'll show you the four common chords here. So F major, okay, instead of the A here, it will be up here. And we've got the G major and the A minor, okay? And this will work with any of the other chords as well. Uh, you know, play with it, experiment with it, but um, when you want to turn this into an actual accompaniment pattern, then this works extremely well in three time. It also works in four time. We'll explore both. Um, but for some reason, I find three time just works with this one. And it just, my right hand starts creating those melodies a little bit easier. Um, I just, I just particularly like it. So for this one, we can start at the bottom and we can play the C, the G, the E, the G, the E. All right. So that's our pattern. C, G, E, G, E. One and two and three. So the first thing to do is just get used to how that feels, how that plays, and make sure you get those notes. Now, uh, one thing to mention is if you're struggling with the octave here, and we're actually wider than octave, we've, we've got quite a span going on, um, just bear in mind, you can turn the wrist into it. All right, so there's no need to fully stretch those notes. You don't need to stretch from a C to an E all in one go here. We can roll ourselves into it, all right? So then we can move up to the F, we can do this in the G, the A minor, and just start moving around those four chord positions. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. And even if you don't add any of the right hand in, I'll show you a trick you can do in the right hand, but even if you don't add that right hand in, that's pretty nice, right? You know, just move it up a few, a few octave like this, uh, uh, an octave. And you can still start having some really nice, um, or you can start having some fun, just moving around those notes. So 
extremely effective, very nice sounding left hand pattern. And that would be what it sounds like in three time. All you need to do in four time is just extend the gap, right? Like this, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So you've got a little more gap there, yeah? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one. So the first thing there is that's the pattern. Um, that's the that's my favorite. I just whip this out and use this uh, whenever I want to not have to worry or think about playing about about being intimidated or, or, or just playing. I want something that I can call upon to get me going. And this is what I use. So now I want to show you something you can do in the right hand um, over the top of this sort of left hand foundation, turn it into a really nice, beautiful piece of music, both hands together. Um, but don't forget, you can grab the sheet music for this or everything we're doing in this lesson. Grab the sheet music, cards up above, information box down below, print it off, follow along, all that good stuff. So in the right hand, just like we took the third note in the left hand, we took this third note. So in C, it will be an E and we shoved it up. All you need to do in the right hand is just play that same note, okay? Again, this is just a technique to get you going. It's just something that you can just do. Um, but on the third note, so if we're in three time, on the third beat of that bar, just play the E like this. So one, two, three. One, two, three. And then for instance, if I decide to move to a G major chord, I'm gonna play Bs. One, two, the third note again, okay? A minor. We've got our C at the top. The third note here is a C. So I'm gonna play C's in the right. And then I'm gonna play an A uh, in the right if I've got my F here in the left and, and now a normal F major chord, got the A here, so I'm gonna use an A. And um, whilst it's not unlocking worlds of melody for you, it just gives you something to do in that right hand, something to work on coordination or anything you want to do. And it actually sounds pretty nice. So if I start moving around different chords, not really thinking about which one, check this out, you know. Three, one, two, three, And I promise you, you know, if you whip this out at any piano in front of anybody, whether it's friends or family or anything, and you start having fun with it, you are gonna sound really nice. You're gonna sound super impressive and you're gonna get some really nice comments. Now, what if we wanted to do this in four time? Well, it's just exactly the same, except we've got that extra beat gap at the end. So one, two, three. And so on. So whilst this is uh, an entry point in, there are of course lots and lots of things that we can add on to this. Um, it is still a fantastic way, again, to sit down at the piano, play some music, have some fun, and most importantly, get creative. So use this pattern, have some fun with it. You can grab the sheet music and the link down below. And if you want four more left-hand accompaniment patterns, in addition to this one, you can click this link to this video right here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.